Hey guys, Amateur Radio World, and today we're making a special video uh, off of a comment we received from Desert Dog asking about basic operating of the FT450 and how it works. So I figured I'd go ahead and make this and useful information for all you guys. I'm going to cover uh, how to operate from the ground up in phone. Also going to cover how to operate from the ground up in CW. And lastly, I'm also going to share a few tips that I found to make the radio a little easier to use and more convenient. So let's jump right in and take a look at those features and procedures. Alright, so I'm going to run through the basics of operating the radio. We will start with phone and then I'll also show you how to use it in CW and then a few basic things you can change to make the radio more user friendly. So, starting off Right now I'm at the bottom of 20 meters and we're on CW mode so we're going to start with basic phone operation. I'll show you how to tune the antenna, different ways to change frequency, and then how to select your mode. Basic phone operating. So naturally it'll move in 10 kilohertz steps but that's going to take you a while to get anywhere so you may or may not choose to turn the fast button on. Fast button is located down here just to the left of the tuning dial. This is how I usually use mine. And now we're moving in 100 hertz steps. Also, using the... I'm not sure exactly what the name of this knob is. I like to call it the selector knob. That's mostly what you use it for. But using that selector knob, by default, if you spin it without being in the menu, it will move you in 5 kilohertz steps. Very convenient. So if I want to get somewhere fast, I can just spin this, and now I'm moving by 5 kilohertz. Say I want to jump the band. If I push this in, now you'll see the last three numbers on the display start to flash. Now if I turn, I'm moving in 100 kilohertz segments. So a lot faster. So there's three ways you can tune around just by default. You can spin this and go at 10 hertz, you can turn fast on and you can go at uh, sorry blanking out here 100 hertz and then you can push this and move by 100 or you can go by 5 just by turning it by itself. So let's get back inside the band here and so we finally find our frequency just somewhere open and we have an antenna plugged in but we don't like the SWR on it what I will do is I will turn the tuner on so to turn on the tuner there's a tune button just turn that on and the tuner light will come on showing you it is activated now the tuner does have a memory built in and you can take advantage of this but if it's your first time tuning this antenna on a specific frequency you just hold the button in, I think it's like two seconds, and that will trigger the automatic tuner. It'll tune for you, and then you're good to go. Now, there is a way to make checking the SWR very easy, and I will show you that once we get to the stage on making the radio more user friendly. But for now, just trust that it's tuned. Next thing you're going to want to do is change your power, which you will do inside the menu. To briefly press um, not function, sorry, you hold function. And then you use this to scroll through to get to power. And then once you get to power, all you have to do is use the selector knob to push it in, and you'll select the sub menu and change your wattage. Once you're done, hold the function button again to return back to the operating mode. So now we have our power set, and over here you'll see the meter button. You can just push the meter, and you will change either SWR, output power, or ALC. By default when you're receiving it's an S meter but when you're transmitting you can have either of those options displayed. Um, that's about it except the mode select which is very straightforward you're just going to change the mode button by pushing mode up or down. Find the mode you want and then you're ready to begin transmitting. So that's the basic operation on phone. Alright guys, welcome to 40 meters where the band is hopping with CW and we're going to show you how you can get in on the action. 
Um, using what we learned in the first segment, we know that we can just use the mode buttons to select the mode we would wish to use, which in our case will be lower sideband CW. Now, be informed, when you're using the radio, there is a lower sideband CW and an upper sideband CW. You will need the proper one selected. Just make sure that you have it selected properly, otherwise you're going to sound distorted to everyone else. So, with that in mind, select the mode according to which band you are on, and then, you now you might think you're ready to just start transmitting. Not so. There are two steps that are critical in making sure you get that QSL. So, the first one is to make sure your break-in is turned on. And what this does, let me find my homemade key here. Actually, it's a homemade paddle. And maybe I'll comment you guys and let me know if you want a little video on showing you how this works but just something I rigged up because I don't have a full-size paddle yet so plug in the paddle and what I can do is I can begin to transmit the Morse code but no one is gonna hear me in a hundred years because I'm not actually transmitting I'm just keying up the speaker uh, that's because break-in is by default turned off and you need to turn that on so to do that you just push function briefly to activate the function mode. Then you come up here to the Vox button, V-O-X-S-T-O button. It is the fourth button on the grid up here. And then you'll push that. That turns break in on. So the V-O-X button, when you're in sideband, turns on your V-O-X. And when you're in CW, it turns on the break in. So now if I push this, I will transmit. Now, nobody comments saying that was illegal because my sideband was going out of the band and everything. Yes, I'm aware. Um, but anyway, we'll continue to tune just inside the band to keep everyone happy. And that's about it. You're ready to go. But uh, you, maybe you're not fast with your Morse code yet. So you need to change a few things to configure the Morse code to be just how you like it. So to enter the menu, we just hold function and we use our selector knob to scroll through the menu there are several CW options um, the ones you need to know about are the CW key inside this m menu you can choose whether you are using a normal paddle or a reverse paddle uh, that so if, if you have your paddle this just determines which side is dash and which side is dot and then you have CW paddle this chooses if you're using a straight key or I'm sorry that's not what this is this is determining if you are using your microphone or your input key and this might sound confusing but I'll explain in a moment the radio here has a very unique feature where if I select mic on this option I can use the down and up buttons on the microphone actually as a Morse code key. let's see if I can do this um, well, the keyer's not turned on, so give me just a second and we'll get to that. Uh, you can change your pitch, uh, your speed, that's important. Uh, I've got mine turned low for the video. Uh, I, I, I'm doing about 10 words per minute right now. Comment and let me know what you're at. But yeah, I'd have it turned down just so keep everything slow. Uh, tone, you can change your tone and your weight, which is just your ratio of dot to dash. I keep it on one to three which is the official standard. So we have everything configured how we like and now we can just go and play with our straight key. Uh, but say we don't actually have a straight key or a paddle and we want to send Morse code anyway. We can go back to that CW paddle, select the mic. And now we just turn our keyer on which is located down here. And if you have paddle selected you can now send with this but if you have mic selected you can use the down and up buttons so I'll just send a quick CQ oh. just real basic and it's a little difficult to do with the mic because that's not what it was designed for but a nice feature if you're out in the field and you don't want extra equipment or if you just don't have a key in general uh, so I think that I covered everything there on how to operate CW. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll make sure to answer those for you.
All right, we're back at 20 meters, and we're going to talk about a few things you can do to make your radio more user-friendly. So the first thing I'm going to do is not actually going to make your radio more user-friendly uh, in general, but you can customize it to be what you want so it's better for you. When you hold function and enter that menu, what you can do is you can scroll, and I've got to remember where it is. I haven't actually changed mine for a while, but... Like I said, haven't done mine right here. So you have customizable buttons on your microphone. So you can choose this button to do any job you want. Normally, you use it to scroll down in frequency, but you have, I think, 30 different options that you can choose from for this button to do, this button to do, and this button to do. Uh, some examples are SWR test, um, record. Uh, you can turn the monitor on off stuff like that great feature so you also have this button which is programmable as well you can have this button do any of those features so what I have done is I have programmed mine once you go inside you can scroll around and choose the SWR set setting for this button here and now whenever you're talking no matter what your meter is set to you can just push this button and it will show you your current SWR. Uh, it puts out a 10 watt CW carrier and you just throw that on and you know if you need to be using your tuner or not. Great feature, I always keep mine set to that. While we're talking about this button, if you're operating, I don't know, if for some reason you can't see the screen and you want to know what frequency you're on, just push that function button and then push that button again. And it will give you your frequency up to the 100th of a hertz, or I'm sorry, 100 hertz, and your operating mode. Nice feature. So that's a little treat there as well. And you also have, this one isn't so much of a feature, but I'll go ahead and share it with you anyways. When you are inside your menu, let me get there. Hang on, I need to remember again where it is. Oh, okay, so right here you have my band and my mode. And you can go inside of here, say that you don't know Morse code and have no interest in knowing it, or you do not do digital. You can come into my mode, and under each and every operating mode, you can turn it on or off for the radio. And you can reconfigure this at any time. But when you do this, you can choose when you're just in regular operating mode, what modes you can scroll through. So say you only use USB and LSB, you can turn all the other ones off and that makes you have a lot less scroll time. You can do the same thing with bands. Say you never operate on 10, uh, 10 meters, say you don't have a 160 antenna, you can turn those off. So when you're scrolling through, it just becomes a little bit quicker and easier to do. Uh, one last thing, you can see here that I have a band that's at 15 megahertz which is an amateur band, so it might be a little confusing, especially if you start playing around on here, as I did before, got it down to the AM station, uh, and, and started scrolling through my bands, and I kept jumping back to the AM station. I was confused. So what this is, is this is a general band for shortwave listening. No matter where you scroll, it'll save it as this band. So I have all my other amateur bands here, but that band, in particular, is marked as general. So it's a reprogrammable band. So if I scroll down here, let's go a little faster. If I scroll down, say here I'm listening. Now, it moves that band down, see, in frequency order. So no matter where you go, this band will move itself according to the frequency it's on and you gotta just remember the last frequency you had it on so you can find it again but that confused me at first because I was doing some shortwave listening and it was its own separate band which was kind of annoying me so I just have it set to 15 so it looks a little better as I'm scrolling through uh, I think that's about it I will just say um, I think that yeah I think that's about it so 73's 
glad I could help you out and make this video. If I didn't cover something that you're interested in, if you've heard about a feature, I have absolutely no problems or hesitations to make a separate video showing just, you know, one or two or three more things that you're interested in having explained, and that would be no problem. And anyone else, if you have a specific video, uh, that'd be great. Anything that you'd like a video on, let me know so I can make that for you. 73's God bless, and we will see you guys later.